Lourdes Perez, a crop lead for Stanislaus County and program coordinator for Ceres Partnership for Healthy Children. Ceres is mostly a rural community. Uh, we work with low-income neighborhoods, primarily Hispanic uh, families. We are largely impacted by food insecurity, barriers to access of healthy fruits and vegetables in their households. All of the work that's being done in Ceres and throughout Stanislaus County has been designed to improve physical activity and healthy food access in the county, um, but also taking it to scale uh, so it impacts the region. The CROP is the Central California Regional Obesity Prevention Program. It operates in eight counties in the Central Valley. Um, I don't think that we're going to achieve any lasting victories until we tackle the obesity epidemic in a way that makes sense for the communities most affected. You can't tackle obesity on an individual by individual basis, so why not focus on environmental and policy changes that can make folks community more accessible in terms of having better food for children and for families and also having more opportunities for people to be physically active. We'll want key players on our side, important people like allies, friends, or political leaders. The Modesto group has decided to work on park improvements, and um, the Ceres community has decided to work on better nutrition in schools, so they will be working with school boards and school administration. We should do surveys, advertise, seek political support to make our voices heard. We have to be good promoters to make things happen for real. What is important is to demonstrate you can all work together with the teachers and with the school as a whole. Today's training was really about thinking through the political climate so that they can put their work into context with who are their allies out there, how can they think about this project in a way that builds their relationships in that community. One of the concerns uh, from community was whether water was safe to drink and uh, water in the schools not being accessible to the students during the day. Well, this is the first time I'm involved in something like this. I'm learning if I want something done, it, you know, even for our community, where to go and get the help. The second of the projects has been bringing a farm stand to the elementary schools to have access there for parents and students. How much are the pineapples? Yeah. Students are looking forward to the days that the farm stand sets up and then they're being taught how to eat healthy in the school so they bring that home. A box of some cherries. Thank you very much. That fruit stand at La Rosa is just a little example of what we can do and what can be accomplished if we really set our minds to it. I know that by educating myself, I can educate others and pass it on not only to the other parents, but to my children. And I hope that that's a legacy that this program can leave. The community of Stockton in which I work doesn't have a, a very good reputation as far as safety is concerned. You won't find a lot of children, you know, outside playing or parents playing in a park. You'll just find people pretty isolated inside just because of their perception of the neighborhood not being safe. So when we had this opportunity to work with the city of Stockton and Stockton Unified School District to um, work with this joint use gymnasium, we really jumped at the opportunity. <laughs> How this joint use gymnasium works is the school district has um, access to the gym during the school hours and then after school the community has use of the gymnasium. Among the programs that we have here are Soul Line Dancing which is a group of mothers who are dancing and being physically active. Another program that we have outside is a soccer league, a children's soccer league, which is boys and girls from about the age of 
seven to about 13, 14 years old. The Joint Use Project is located in the park and all sorts of safety issues that were you know, impeding children from playing in the park and one of that was graffiti. So the youth said, let's adopt the park. And today they were out painting over graffiti, picking up trash and keeping the park clean. So the Joint Use Project has been a catalyst for major improvements in the community in this last year. With joint use, it's really helpful to have one community who's succeeded in opening up the gates to, uh, to their school, such as in Southeast Fresno, and then use that as a case study for other parents that are really trying to do that in their community. The walking school bus is primarily um, trying to encourage children and adults to walk, to be physically active, and also um, one of the concerns for parents uh, to allow them to walk was the safety. And parents in the leadership program decided that they wanted to take that as a project and address some safe routes to schools. My primary concern is my children's safety, but the walking school bus also helps them get the exercise they need. So they're coming to school alert and ready to learn because they have exercised. Walking school bus is an idea that I think is genius. I don't know why we don't do it more often, why we didn't think to do it sooner. That's it, perfect, perfect. Through our leadership program, we're trying to tackle this problem of low access to healthy food and physical activity opportunities at a local level, while at the same time giving folks the sense and elected leaders the sense that these aren't problems you can solve just on a local level. CROP's investment in building genuine networks among grassroots leaders, I think, will probably be the most long-lasting tool for obesity prevention in, in the Valley. Once you get a community that has a sense that they've accomplished something, then they're unstoppable.